when I first came here in 1978 to, to work with Dr. Folkman, uh, he was always the boss, he was the leader, but he was relatively accessible at the time and he was often working right alongside of you and having conversations with you and he was just another person. And over the years and years his fame grew and uh, people would seek him out and treat him reverentially sometimes. And one time, <coughs> Just a few years ago, I saw him in the corridor and I said, Judy, you know, when I first came to work with you, you were a person. But now, you seem to be an icon. <laughs> yeah. What does that feel like? And he didn't answer and went about his business. The next day, he came in and he had told a story to his wife, Paula. And he came back and he said, Bruce, Paula says, I can be an icon at work, but not at home. <laughs> so, as I had mentioned, Dr. Popin traveled a lot. And when he was here, especially as his career grew, uh, he, he would have very little time to talk to anybody. In fact, sometimes you would stop in the hall and he would tell you for five minutes why he didn't have time to talk with you. Uh, all the things that he had to do. And if he had just told you in 10 seconds and then gone on, he would have saved five minutes. But uh, he had to tell you all the reasons why he didn't have time to, to talk to you. So we all had times when we were approaching him. And you would learn when to approach him, best late at night. Um, but we also knew that if he was invited to a conference, that he would often go to talk about angiogenesis. And if you happen to be at a conference that he was at, you would find that he had more time to talk because he wasn't receiving all the phone calls or talking to patients or doing all the other things that he would do here. So we had a joke that if you had something you really needed to talk to Dr. Folkman about, the best way to do it was to organize a conference, invite him to be a speaker, <laughs> and then talk to him at the conference.